Hello, I'm Bryce Brewer with Grace Technologies, here to talk to you today about our GraceSense predictive maintenance system. You probably know us from our Grace ports, which are panel interface connectors to program devices inside the panel safely with the door closed. You might also know us from our Grace PESDs, which stands for Permanent Electrical Safety Devices. This enhances your lockout tagout program by allowing for the indication of the presence of voltage as well as the safe test point, which can give you the absence of voltage test from outside of the panel safely. The past two years, we've been working on our GraceSense predictive maintenance system, which is what we're here to talk about today. So this device is our vibration and temperature node. It would sit out on your motor, gather data from that, and send it wirelessly up to 30 meters to our cloud gate using 802.15.4 Zigbee compatible communication. This cloud gate collects data from all its children, and then it can send it up to the cloud using Wi-Fi or LTE, depending on the option you select. From there, we're gonna go into a little bit of a hardware overview and get you an in-depth look at these devices. First up is our vibration and temperature node. This device would sit out on a motor and be able to send back information about that motor's health using a triaxial accelerometer, as well as a surface mount RTD. So it's all overmolded, has a replaceable long life battery that lasts three to five years at a one hour setting. So this device has an LED to provide status indication, as well as a through hold where you can mount it onto a variety of our other mounting options or stud mount directly to the equipment. So if you didn't want to tap a hole into your motor or other piece of equipment, we have our plate mount base. So this would be epoxied onto the motor, and then you just stud mount directly to it using this threaded hole. Next up is our magnetic base, which is the same thing as our plate mount base, except it has two magnetic strips that allow it to attach to a motor, bearing, or any other rotating piece of equipment that you're interested in. Last is our epoxy fin mount base. So this would just go into the fin in a bit of epoxy and then you stud mount just like the other ones right under the top. And then our power and IO expansion modules. So this device is actually the center one here. The battery mounts to the top and it sits on top of our vibration and temperature node which you can see the LED right there coming through. This option has a coaxial connector which can be used with this type of antenna cable. But this can be removed and a remote antenna can be ran through that guarding. Other options include an M8 connector to where you can power the device using 24 volts instead of the battery. Here's a quick look at that just by itself without the battery and the node attached. Then we have our cloud gate. So this is the parent in the network, and it would sit within 30 meters of its children to grab that 802.15.4 communication. And then this one's configured with Wi-Fi to bring it up to the cloud. We also have LTE via AT&T or Verizon. We also have on the back the ability to use an RJ45 Ethernet port to communicate with a PLC and that can be done at the same time as using your cloud connection so you can have data in multiple places. Um, currently we have the ability to interface with Ethernet IP to your control logics or Modbus TCP IP. The terminal blocks that you see here allow you to bring in 24 volt power and then sensors. So this would be any third party sensor that matches the, the type of input card that we have installed. So this is configured at the factory just like you would configure an IO slice where you're bringing in analog. So you can choose four to 20 milliamps, accelerometers, thermistors, zero to 10 volt sensors, and more. So now that we've covered the hardware, we're gonna jump into the maintenance hub and look at some of the features there. Here's the dashboard for the GraceSense maintenance hub. You'll see that it is a nested folder structure with different nodes being housed in groups depending on how you want to organize it. 
you'll see we are in a warning status and that is due to this surface temperature channel being in a warning state because I put a 15 degrees C alarm on it. So let's take a look at that. So here's the data. You'll see that at the end here is where the alarm went out. We were in fact over 15 degrees C. So in order to get that alert, it would go out via SMS or email to any recipients that you'd want it to go out to. And it would look something like this. You'll have the overview, the channel that it was tripped on, the reading, and the time that it occurred, as well as the remediation steps. So that's a very quick look at the maintenance hub. Let's go into data freedom. So Grace's view on data is that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Customers should be able to choose how they use their data and how they see it. An IIoT solution should be flexible enough to stand alone as well as allow its data to be integrated in other systems. So we do have five different integration options that we'll be covering today. So all options have the node that sits out on your asset and sends its data using 802.15.4 ZigBee compatible communication to the cloud gate. Then from there, that's where your options come in. So you can have Wi-Fi or LTE to the Grace cloud, and that's the standard option that's hosted on Microsoft Azure. If you did have a private cloud that you wanted to host the data in, that's an option as well. And if you don't want the data to leave your four walls, you can have it hosted on an on-premise server. We also offer database to database integrations using an API such as a RESTful API to your CMMS system, for example. Then there's the control integration option, which allows you to integrate into the Ethernet IP or Modbus TCP IP network. So you can combine these different solutions. So you can have, say, LTE to the Grace Cloud and then use Ethernet IP into your control logic system by Rockwell Automation. We're going to move on to our last section on motor vibration analysis. So why are we talking about vibration? Almost all critical equipment have a major rotating component. Whether that's a pump, fan, conveyor, they all need that motor to keep running. Rotating systems are constantly subjected to mechanical strain, friction, fatigue, that wear it down over time. These systems require expertise to maintain and require downtime in order to perform the tasks. So we want to provide as much warning as possible to where we can bring down the equipment at a time of our choosing rather than waiting for it to fail at the worst possible time. So if we look at the design to failure curve, you'll see functional failure on the far right. Just before that, you'll see a temperature increase increased current draw, and then in the predictive realm, you'll see changes in vibration. So we can detect the vibration signature increase in anomalies before we'll see increased current draw or temperature increase, which lead to that functional failure. It's more than just amplitude. So amplitude will tell you that there is a problem, but it won't tell you how to fix it. Motor-specific analysis detects deterioration earlier so if we look at vibration signal processing, we'll have our Graysense vibration and temperature node on the machine of interest that gathers the data. We digitize it, and then we do an FFT or fast Fourier transform on that data to put it into the frequency domain. Once it's in the frequency domain, we have the ability to compare that against the rotational speed of the motor in order to categorize faults and be able to actually analyze that data. So once we know the fault is occurring, we can use frequency such as is it subsynchronous or below the turning speed of the motor, or is it harmonic, which is an exact multiple of the turning speed? What direction is it? Is it radial or axial? And diagnostic testing such as a phase analysis to determine what the exact fault is. Using the previous information, we can see that the Vibration periodic table is a great tool to rule out some options to where we can get to the actual problem. So all radial faults are in red, 
Axial faults are in yellow. And if it's radial or axial, it's in orange. And then once we rule out those options, we can look at, is it synchronous? Is it subsynchronous or non-synchronous or harmonic? Using that information, we can rule it down to a few options, which then a diagnostic test can be used to determine what the fault is. So what does IIoT provide to motor vibration analysis? Frequency of sampling. So if it's typically a quarterly route and now we're doing it hourly, that's 2,000 times the number of samples. It's a permanent wireless solution, so it's on your equipment 24-7 to give you that early detection. And then an IoT solution should be able to visualize that data for you. What Grace provides on top of a typical solution is a cost-effective solution with analytics to provide actionable data. We capture data and process it at the edge to maintain high battery life. And we make vibration analysis possible for the typical maintenance personnel, as well as augment our vibration specialists with a wealth of data. Thanks for learning about motor vibration analysis. Make sure to check out Grace's other videos to learn more.